today we're turning this footage into this footage. Hello wonderful human being, Sheldon Evans here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to color grade your footage and how to get that cinematic look as fast as possible. So a lot of you guys asked me how I color graded and edited my New York film that is up on my YouTube channel. You guys have been loving it so far, thank you so much. So I thought I'd show you guys how I edited that whole movie. And that entire thing was edited with this little tool right here known as the Loop Deck Plus. Now you may have seen something like this before, but basically it's an external control panel that takes all of the features and the functions that you see in Adobe Premiere Pro, in Photoshop, in Final Cut Pro X, whatever program you're using to edit in, and brings it to an external panel that you can then use and manipulate in the real world. So all of these little dials and buttons can be customized to whatever you like in the program that you're using. In addition to that, you can have different layers of functionality. So every button can be customized basically six times because you get a dial that can turn, you get a dial that you can press, and then if you hold the function button or if you change it to custom mode, those functions then double up and change to something completely different in whatever program you're using. I will be announcing a giveaway of one of these loop decks at the end of the video so make sure that you stay tuned all the way to the end. Okay so I've dropped a few clips into Premiere Pro from that New York film of mine just to show you how I've customized my loop deck to make it as fast as possible to edit with. Before we get into color correction and color grading and the differences between those I'm going to show you how I edit in the timeline in Premiere Pro just to cut together the clips before we color grade because we do that first before we go into color grading. So the way that I've customized it is I've set this D1 dial to a playhead scrub that scrubs through the, the timeline at five frames a pop. So every time you touch the dial, it moves ahead five frames. And then if you hit the dial in and you press it in, it selects the clip that the playhead is currently on. So you can edit that clip however you want. Then I've customized my up and down buttons as well. So the loop deck has arrow buttons the same as you'd have on a regular keyboard. And I've customized them so that the up button deletes an empty space. If you want to undo something, it's got dedicated undo and redo buttons on the loop deck. So I'm gonna scroll through the timeline and select this first clip right here. As you can see, this clip was shot in 120 frames per second, which means that I can then slow it down to 24 frames per second and it'll make the entire clip slow motion. Now I've customized a button for that as well. So my L2 button on my loop deck is set to speed and duration of the clip. So if I hit that while I've got a clip selected, I can then adjust the speed to 25%, hit okay, and there you go. My clip has now slowed down. So if I hit play, the clip plays in slow motion. Now I filled up that gap and I've got my clips arranged in a way that I like them. But if I have a ton of different clips on the timeline, it's very slow for me to scrub through the timeline using just this D1 dial. So I've customized this control dial to then skip to the different edit points in my timeline. So if I've got hundreds of clips set up in my sequence, I can simply scroll through them with the control dial and then use D1 to get a specific section of the clip. What also happens is if you have a lot of different clips in your timeline, you can't really see them all. So I've then customized my D2 dial as the zoom dial. So I can zoom in and out of my sequence to quickly see where all my clips are and where I am in my sequence. You basically feel like a DJ using these little dials moving around the timeline. Now, once you've got your clips laid out inside of your timeline, you might want to trim them or cut them and I've made that very easy as well. So as you can see, I've got these clips selected. If I use my D1 dial and scroll through my timeline, I can adjust exactly where I want to cut the clip. So I don't like where this clip goes to complete black at the end there. So I'm going to trim that off. And I've set my C5 and C6 custom buttons to trim forward and trim backwards. So if I hit C6, it's going to trim the end of this clip off to the next edit point in the timeline. And the same goes for C5. So if I go to the beginning of the clip and I don't want the beginning of the clip, I can just hit C5 and trim that backwards. And again, if I don't like that, I can just undo. I can do that with any of the clips that I'm on. So if I go to the end here and I want the end of this clip trimmed off, I hit C6 and trim the end of that clip off. But what happens if I want to make a cut on the clip somewhere? I can do that simply by pressing the down arrow and that'll cut my clip wherever I hit that thing. So I can make tons of different cuts, but unlike them, I can just simply hit undo. So you can see how you can customize this panel to make it as fast as possible for you to edit with. Now let's talk about color grading and color correction. Firstly, the difference between color grading and color correction. So color correction is basically taking the clip that you have and then editing it or color correcting it so it resembles what it would look like to the naked eye or what you saw while you were on set. 
You're not going to be doing any fancy colors or extreme edits that make it look all fancy and add mood to the image. That is color correction. Color grading, however, is adding an effect to the clip that then adds color that you wouldn't naturally see in the real world, which would evoke an emotion or some sort of mood and bring the overall tone of your movie or clip together. So we're going to start off with color correction and it's super easy using the loop deck. You don't even have to enter the color correction mode of Premiere Pro. And it can be quite difficult sometimes color correcting on this tiny program monitor that we have in Premiere Pro. So you can hit the screen mode function, make it full screen, and you can then color grade full screen without having to look at any of the dials that are on the screen. So you can use all the real estate of your display. So I'm gonna start off with exposure and I can bring the exposure of this clip up slightly. I can then lower the contrast or increase the contrast by adjusting the contrast slider. You can bring up your shadows, you can bring them down, highlights, temperature. This is if you haven't got your temperature correct on set, you can then adjust it with this. And if you wanna reset any of these adjustments, simply hit those buttons in and it'll reset that specific adjustment to whatever it was initially. So let me show you what's happening behind the scenes of this panel. So I'm gonna switch our screen mode to the regular mode that we're used to editing in. I'm gonna press P2, which I've customized to the Lumetri panel inside of Premiere Pro. Now if I go ahead and click on basic correction and then adjust the dials on the loop deck, you'll see that it brings those sliders left and right in the control panel. And everything that I adjust on the panel then adjusts inside of Lumetri. But like I said, we don't even have to look at that because we can use our eye to then adjust the color of the image that we're working on. So you gain back that extra screen real estate. Now the loop deck was originally designed for Lightroom, but like I've said, they've expanded compatibility to a ton of different programs. So that's why you'll see things like U saturation luminance on the panel even though you don't really see that inside of Premiere Pro. But that means that those buttons have been customized to something else. So if I hit the hue, saturation or luminance button on the keyboard you can see that it lights up. What that's doing is activating the different color wheels inside of Lumetri's color balance window. So for example if I have the panel set to hue I can then select that and that'll adjust the highlights inside of the color wheels. If I select saturation, it'll be mid-tones, luminance will be shadows. So we're gonna start with the highlights and then we've got the additional three dials on the right that'll adjust the different controls within that color wheel. So the first dial will adjust the left and right movement. The second dial will adjust the up and down movement and the third dial adjusts the level. So I can bring up my highlights or bring down my highlights by just adjusting that. I can then adjust the colors that are in my highlights in a way that's sort of similar to an etch -a sketch which is left and up and down and right that moves that dial around. It gives you very, very precise color movements. And again, if you want to reset any of the stuff, you simply click them in and it resets those buttons. The same goes with saturation and luminance which is mid-tones and shadows. As I adjust these things, you can see that it then moves those specific items around. So I'm going to reset this and then go for a very basic blue and orange edit. So I'm going to go to highlights and I'm going to add some blues into my highlights by bringing that down to that sort of section over there. I'm going to add some yellows into my shadow by doing that. There we go. And my midtones, I'm going to bring a little bit of blue into them. And then I'm going to increase my highlights levels slightly just to make them pop a little bit more. And that's how simple it is to add colors to your highlights and your shadows using this tool. But what happens if you don't know how or what sort of look you want to go for and you want to just apply a LUT? Well, we've got buttons for that. Like I said, you can customize this thing however you like. So I've customized one of my own personal LUTs from the Hello Wonderful LUT pack that I have. A link to that is in the description down below if you want to check it out. I'll give you guys a discount code for 50% off as well. So I've customized my own custom LUT to P1 on the keyboard. Now you can customize any of these buttons to a ton of different functions just as you can every other button on the loop deck. But I've customized P1 because P, preset, LUT. LUT is basically a lookup table which is just a grid of colors that you can then download and then apply to your image. If you haven't seen what a LUT is before, I do have another color grading video on my channel that explains all of that if you wanna go more in depth about that. So I'm gonna hit P1 and you'll see it simply applies the LUT directly to the image. Now it's very, very intense as you can see, but that's the way that LUTs work because the intensity is at 100%. That is so that you can bring it down and then adjust it to your liking. Now I've customized the clarity button on the loop deck to adjust the intensity of my LUT because you don't really use the clarity slider in Premiere Pro, that's usually for Lightroom. So if I adjust this down, you can see that it brings the adjustment of the LUT down 
or if I crank it all the way up, you'll see that it applies it way too much. So we're gonna bring this down. We want it to be subtle because the idea is that once you've color graded your footage, you don't want people to think, oh, this is definitely being colored. This looks super weird. You want it to be almost subconscious so that it really affects them in an emotional way, not in a way that they're like, whoa, this is weird. So if I click on the creative panel, you'll see that as I adjust the clarity slider, the intensity of my LUT adjusts. Now I'm really struggling to see what I'm doing because this program window is so small. So I'm gonna hit my screen mode and then adjust my color grade from there. So I'm gonna bring the highlights up slightly, I'm gonna bring my shadows up slightly, and I'm gonna bring the overall exposure down to give it that filmic look that's almost flat but has some color to it. Then I'm gonna increase the intensity of the light because I do like how blue it is. And again, I can use the D1 slider to then scrub through the clip and see what it looks like. I don't like how dark it looks right at the end of the clip, so I'm gonna bring the shadows up even more. I can bring over the tint. I can then bring the temperature down slightly to give it a cool look because I want this to be very cool and moody. And the same goes for every other clip in my timeline. Like again, I don't have to look at my timeline at all. I can simply scrub through using my D1 slider, press P1 to apply my LUT, decrease the LUT slightly, bring up the exposure, bring up the shadows, just the temperature down, and there we go. Now I want these clips to match one another when they're cut together in a timeline. So as you can see, this clip is a lot less saturated. So I'm gonna increase the LUT, decrease the temperature slightly, bring up the shadows and start matching those clips together. Let's do the last clip. As you can see, this clip's completely different to the other two. So I'm gonna use my D1 slider, press P1 to apply my LUT, decrease the intensity of the LUT, increase the exposure of the clip, bring down the temperature, and there we go. We're matching all of our clips together without ever having to look at any of the windows inside of Premiere Pro and working on a full screen monitor because all of those controls are now external in the real world. Now, once you're happy with the edit, you can go ahead and change the screen mode. You don't even have to do that. You can just hit the export button if you want to. It brings up the export window and I will go ahead and select YouTube 1080p and hit export. Now, once you do that, your clip's exported and your movie is done. Now that edit was way faster than using Premiere Pro's built-in tools because I had access to all of those tools on the loop deck. I never once had to look at any of the tools, switch between any of the panels. All of it was done directly on the loop deck and I could do it in full screen. So you don't even have to have a second monitor while you're editing. Usually I would edit with a laptop and a dedicated second monitor so that I could work in Premiere Pro and then see what my color adjustments are looking like on the second monitor. But now it simply brings all of that out into the real world. I can use the panel and edit in a full screen mode. This speeds up the workflow more than I can ever explain. I'm a really, really big fan of this tool. And like I said at the beginning of this video, Loop Deck will be doing a giveaway of one of these. So comment down below, comment anything you liked about the video, what you liked about the Loop Deck. If you downloaded my lights, just comment something down below. I will be selecting a winner from the comments in two weeks from the upload date of this video and you will be sent a loop deck along with a free copy of my Hello Wonderful Light Pack. So I really hope you guys liked the video. If you did like it, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this in the future and let me know down in the comments section below what you wanna see next and what you liked about this. As always, I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.